Itabudu miungu mingine Ilio pananishwa na yeyote Sitapiga magoti yangu ni sujudu Nitakusanya sadaka zangu ziwe manukato Kwa Yesu astahili sifa Sitabudu miungu mingine ilio fananishwa na yote Sitapiga magoti yangu ni sujudu Nitakusanya sadaka zangu ziwe manukato Kwa Yesu, kwa Yesu Astahili sifa Naleta sadaka za sifa kwa kobwana Neshima na mamlaka zipoke Mtakatifu, mtakatifu, na kuita mtakatifu, oh Yesu, wewe mtakatifu. Na leta sadaka za sifa kwa kobwana, heshima na mamlaka zipoke. Na kuita mtakatifu Oh Yesu Wewe mtakatifu Sitabudu miungu mingine Ilio fananishwa na eote Sitapiga magoti yangu ni sujudu Nita kusanya sadaka zangu ziwe manukato Kwa kwa Yesu, kwa Yesu Kwa stahili sifa Sitabudu miungu mingine Ilio fananishwa na eote Sitapiga magoti yangu ni sujudu Nita kusanya sadaka, zangu ziwe manukato Hallelujah, kwa Yesu Astahili sifa Na leta sadaka za sifa kwa kobwana Heshima na mamlaka zipoke Mtakatifu, mtakatifu, na kuita mtakatifu Oh Yesu, wewe mtakatifu Na leta sadaka za sifa kwa kobwana Heshima na mamlaka zipoke Mtakatifu, mtakatifu, na kuita mtakatifu Oh Yesu, wewe mtakatifu Sitabudu miungu mingine, ilio fananishwa na eote Sitapiga magoti, yangu ni sujudu Nita kusanya sadaka zangu ziwe manukato Hallelujah kwa Yesu Astahili sifa Na leta sadaka za sifa kwa kwa buwana Heshima na mamlaka zipoke Mtakatifu, mtakatifu, na kuita mtakatifu Oh Yesu, wewe mtakatifu
si fu na leta sada kaza si pa kwa kwa bwana heshima na mamlaka si poke mtakatifu mtakatifu na kuita mtakatifu Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. You are holy. You are righteous. You are faithful. You are supreme. You are supreme, O oh God. You are divine. You are so and full of mercy. You are love and your tender mercies are known worldwide in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as I speak your word, I pray that you're going to show us mercy, open our eyes of understanding and open our ears of understanding and let our eyes not be dim according to your word in Isaiah 32 and verses five, that our eyes shall not be dim and our ears shall, not, shall hearken unto the masses and the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome on board once again. This is yet another time that we are all looking forward to so that we can be able to learn about altars. And today I want us to deal with when altars are multiplied. When altars are multiplied and they are not challenged, and challenged altars. And this is what I want us to look at, evil and challenged altars. Praise the name of the Lord. I've taught you so much. I've taught you so very much. I've taught you a lot. And thank you for the response of many. Thank you for those that have responded in their sacrifices and also hearkening to the word of God, praying and fasting. May the God of this commission show you mercy and remember you. I want us to know something before I continue, that the strength of an altar is determined or it is determined and it will depend on a few things. The altar, the strength of an altar will, is determined or it uh, will depend on the, on the following. Number one, dedication. I will give you scripture, don't mind. I want us to finish because I didn't do it. Dedication and your commitment to the priest. Now, the more you get committed, the more you get dedicated and committed to the priest on duty over your lives, then you find that altars are being destroyed and altars are being lifted or builded. When you dedicate yourself to your pastor, praying for her, like me, I pray for Papa for many months, many minutes, minutes, many hours. I can pray for him for one hour. When I've done much is one hour. Most times I pray for 45 minutes for Papa and the family and the calling. Why? Because I want to be dedicated. What you pray for is what manifests in your life. I get committed when I see they have meetings. I make I'm committed. I am committed online. I am committed to pray with him. I am committed to support him. I am committed to pray and fast. I am committed to tithe. I am committed to whatever you can. God can use you to commit yourself to your priest. Then it is going to do well. Number two, your promise at at uh, at stake. Or for example, your promise at that stake. Uh, your promise at that time, quality of the promise, the price at that time of your battle. What are you telling God? What do you want? What are the promises you desire? The altar and the promises for that time, because altar is lifted many times. Altars, they are promises for many times. Maybe it is a child. Now, that, uh, that, uh, that promise, it, you must look at the quality of that promise. Number six, uh, number C. Uh, nature of the covenant mediator. What is the nature of the covenant mediator? Who is mediating between you and your problem? What is that covenant you have? What is that covenant between you and the priest, between you and that person? That, because why am I talking much about a priest? It is because the priest is the one that serves the altar. You are giving services your altar. 
your sacrifices, services, your altar. The same way you buy a car, you have to service, you go for service, the miles are checked, the engine is checked. That is what happened with your sacrifices and your offerings, your tithes, your prayer life. This one is not prayer. Sacrifice much. Let me tell you, to be honest with you, when you are bringing down an altar, what matters is not much prayer, but the giving, the sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. Number D, quality of sacrifice, blood, finances, clothes, satanic uh, altars. And today we are dealing with evil and unchallenged evil altars. Now they give, in fact, they give virgins, they rape virgins. They come to the new people, the prime, uh, the prime youths, you know, now because it is the quality of the sacrifice the quality of your sacrifice will speak at your altar number c number e ranks i love this ranks of spirits attending to the altar let me tell you something we have ranks in ephesians chapter 6 verses 12 let's go there it's about principalities and power and then i call i i finish with that i go to an to unchallenged uh to unchallenged uh, ephesians chapter 6 from verses 12 Look at this. The ranks, R-A-N-K-S, the ranks of spirits attending to the altar. Now, the spirits can be positive, can be negative. When you meet a man of God, a genuine man of God, the, that, the spirit of that man of God, and it is the spirit of God within him, will move the rank of that. You can, in other words, levels, levels of authority. You can be 10 ministers calling yourselves apostle, but there is ranks in that line. I, I don't fight. When we meet, for, for tea, when we meet uh, in a meeting with other pastors, I don't fight who will preach the best, who will go down because we are graced differently. We have levels. There are people who will not be able to cast out devils. There are others even in deliverance that can cast out and others will be hard for them to cast out. Praise the name of the Lord. So the, the ranks of the spirit attending to the altar. When you plant altar, when you sacrifice in the altar of chariots of fire commission, when you make me your priest, when you make me your prophet, my spirit, the rank of my spirit will determine your success. The rank of my spirit will determine how battle I will fight and how victory I will gain on your behalf. Yeah, Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So these are powers, principalities, powers, the uh, rulers, and, and the spiritual wickedness. They have ranks. They have ranks. The same way, when you make me your prophet, when you make me your pastor, the level of my rank in the spiritual realm, the badges that I have will be able to bring down those powers. Praise the name of the Lord. So these are things that you are supposed to note. Amen. These are things that you are supposed to note. Let me not go to this. Let's go to, don't mind. I'll go there, but not today. Let's go to the other phase. Altars, when evil altars are unchallenged. What happens if you don't challenge altars? If you don't challenge altars, what will happen? If you don't challenge evil altars, you say another one will deal with it. It will control you. It will still continue fighting you because you have not controlled it. You have not dealt with it. If you say God will raise another person in my father's house to deal with this challenge, it is well. God will still use another person. There is something I tell people. What you cannot do, God will bring another, another person. There will be replacement. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want us to look at a few notes that I've written when generation generation of evil and 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 challenged altars when they are on operation generation of multiplied evil altars when they are not challenged what happens 
when they are not challenged, what happens? Let's go to, to Noah, to Genesis chapter 6. I love when I'm teaching about generational cars, generational altars, I deal with the Noah. I go to Noah chapter, chapter 6, chapter 6. I go to Noah chapter 6 and chapter 7 and chapter 8. These are scriptures you go looking in chapter 9 because it starts from chapter 6 when men slept with the, with the, the sons of God when they were brought down and the problems that came. Chapter 6 is when God instructed Noah to build the ark. Chapter 7 is when Noah entered into the ark. Chapter 8, he has come out of the ark. Chapter 9 is when he has, God has made an altar. When you look in Genesis chapter 8 and verses 20, the Bible says, And Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean foe, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And offered any person telling you that you are not supposed to give sacrifices is a liar. The Bible says that and Noah was able to offer a burnt offering unto the altar. And he serviced the altar. I have entered into a new... He knew people have died. He knew animals have died. It is only me, my wife. It is only me, my wife, my sons, and their wives. We are the only ones. And these animals, we are to bring another generation. I call it gene uh, Noah generational altar. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cast the ground anymore. He entered into a covenant. He entered into a covenant. There's a, another scripture when I was looking yesterday. I saw it. I looked at it and I saw it and I was so happy. When the Bible says that now I will start a covenant with you. I will start my covenant with you, Abe. I will start a covenant. Uh, uh, hey, chapter 6. Verses 18, but with you will I establish my covenant and you shall come into the ark. You and I will establish my covenant with you. Which covenant? Noah was told, build the ark. Every day Noah was telling people, oh, come, let us build the ark. They would laugh at him. Now, when the ark was built, God spoke to Noah and said, now I will establish my covenant with you, not with them, because I'm finishing them. With you, I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark. The covenant of, the agreement of Noah, build the ark, because I am going to destroy this generation, and I will save you and the animals. So that is a covenant. When Noah finished building the ark, when Noah followed every instruction, People laughing at him. Let me tell you something. When you hear somebody or a minister like now, I'm telling you there is revival. Follow me. Follow what I'm saying. So that when I'm enjoying the fruits of revival, you shall also enjoy. When God is establishing the covenant of revival, you too shall enjoy the covenant. Now, people did not build. People were laughing with at him. People were mocking, oh, how can God kill all these people, you know? But today, God said, but with you, I will establish my covenant, and you shall come into the ark, you and your sons, and your wife, and your sons' wives, with you, and of every living creature. Go read all of it. Praise the name of the Lord. It is called Noah Generational Altar. If the generation, if the altar is not, is not, uh, challenged. Challenging is fighting it. You have to challenge. There is sickness in your father's house. Challenge. Challenge. My friend, I like challenging altars, but it will depend with the strength you have. Number two, who is covering you? So that you will not be told, we know. Hey, Paul, we know. Hey, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? They were the sons of Skeva. They were not born of Skeva. No. They were sons of the prophet. Sons of Skeva, just like children, the sons of Paul in the ministry. These were sons of Skeva, of Skeva, of Skeva. sons under his covering. They were naked, they were thrown because the grace was so much upon Paul and Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So multiplication of evil altars 
in any generation brings down God's wrath upon such generation. If you don't challenge evil altars in your village, evil altar, prostitution, praying against prostitution, praying against sicknesses, if you don't deal with altars that are affecting your home, that are affecting your marriage, that are affecting your children, that are affecting your family, that are affecting you as a person, you will attract the wrath of God and he will bring judgment. Praise the name of the Lord. So you have to challenge altars that you see. When I, in Embu County, I challenge altars. If I see something is coming up which is not good, I deal with it. If I see the medics are crying, I deal with it. When I see, like now I hear that Embu is second in COVID-19 Kenya, I am dealing with it. Why? Because I want to challenge it now. Now that it has come in, hey, now that it has come in my location, I have to deal with it. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, anywhere idolatry is enthroned anywhere these are notes i wrote many years ago this one i did 2014 i added from what i've learned i added now anywhere idolatry is enthroned the power the people in such places will be left under the masses of the devil look at that anywhere idolatry is enthroned the people in such places will be left under the masses of the devil they will be left under the masses of the devil. Anywhere idolatry is not challenged. I have one brother. This brother, not my own brother, but brother in the Lord. Sometimes his head was going bad. Eh? So he entered in one of the Roman churches here in Embu. And broke down, <laughs> brought down that image of Maria. Papa, and you know it's expensive, the big one that is outside. Eh? Okay. They showed him mercy because his head was not right. We don't deal with them like that. We pray. When we deal with them in the spiritual realm, people will bring them down. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, anywhere idolatry, worshiping Maria, sorry to say it, is idolatry. It is, Maria is just like me, a woman that God favored. Is like now God using me for revival in the nation of Kenya. And this is where we are bringing problems. When you see somebody has lifted the altar of revival, miracles will happen. People will start worshiping that person. Now, the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, that Hail Mary, you are favored among, not above. You are favored among women, not above. You are favored among women. Let's go there because I've touched it. We are dealing with idolatry. How do you put an image of somebody's picture? You put it and you say, this is Jesus. Who told you that that is Jesus? Who told you that that is Jesus? Who told you that is not Jesus? Let me use my Bible well. Look, that is not Jesus. That is idolatry. How do you find an image? You just bow before it. It is idolatry. So that one you have to deal with it. Because any unchallenged altar, any altar that is unchallenged, hallelujah. Chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, I don't know why I confuse it to chapter 2. Chapter 1 and verses 28. And the angel came unto her. Let me do it 27 so that you can know who it is. To a virgin exposed or imposed or exposed or whatever, exposed, whatever, to a virgin that was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, hello, Mary, hello, hello, hail, hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with you, blessed art thou among women. Blessed art thou, we muradime, blessed art thou among, among, mark that, among, not above, among, let me read in this other scripture, maybe this other Bible, maybe it is not right, that one. And the angel came to her and said, Hail, you are that highly favored, that highly favored. You are that highly favored. Mary, you are that highly favored. 
The Lord is with you. Listen, the Lord is with you. So when the Lord is with you, you are highly favored. Blessed are you among, 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 not above, among women, not above. My people error for lack of knowing the scripture. Not above, among, among. If I have a Kikuyu Bible, I would have read it in Kikuyu so that we know what is among. Among, negatagate, in the midst of other virgins. Virgins that have not been honored. Virgins that have not, are not favored. So you have to challenge altars that are speaking. If you have those images of Maria, you have those images of Jesus, you have those images, you know, bring them down. Why? That is not God. That is a person. Number three, remember, please, I am dealing with unchallenged altar, so I speak some things that many or a few may fight. Now, listening to any other voice other than that of God is a beginning of idolatry. Look at Adam and Eve. Listening to another voice apart from the voice of God. Listening. There are people I do deliverance, and I hear the, and they tell me I'm hearing voices. I am hearing voices. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Glory be to God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, chapter 3. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when you go to Genesis chapter 3, I am looking for the right words. Verses 8. Verses 8. This is long. Let's do from verses. Oh, the verses. Three. But of the fruit of the tree, which is, they heard the voice of God in the beginning. And God said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. And the Lord God had, had that God had made. And he said to the woman, Yeah, has God said, Look at that. Yeah, has God. There are people who ask my people. Uh, is Apostle Damaris a, a seer? <laughs> is Apostle Damaris, in other words, they want to ask, is she a diviner? They don't want to use diviner. They want to use a seer or a prophet, you know, because very few people see. People in Kenya believe when somebody say, I see, you know, the Lord is, it is not only evil who see. The eyes belongs to God. God opens people's eyes. When you read in, in, in Isaiah 32 and verses 5, the Bible says that your eyes shall not be dim. Your ears shall hearken unto the word of the Lord. When you, they, we, I can give you scriptures about eyes. Praise the name of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for them. Praise the name of the Lord. When you look in Numbers, the Bible says, in Numbers 23, the Bible says in verses 1 and up to verses 3, and Balaam, the, uh, the man that seeth, the man that seeth, praise the name of the Lord. So seeing, God gives eyes. Now this demon comes and says, oh, hey, did God say, did God, you know, when you give prophecy, people will say, hmm, did if you hear somebody say that in the nation of Kenya there is only one prophet, that is doctrine, that is falsehood, that is false prophecy. The Bible says, and Elijah told God, I am the only one left behind. And God said, no, no, I have 700 more. Praise the name of the Lord. Look here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yeah, has God said, You shall not eat of this of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit. Look at this silly woman. How do you expose your secret aimlessly? And I don't blame her. Eve was not there. Adam was not there. Let me tell you, if your husband is not there, if you are married, your husband is not telling you, oh, you are smart, babe. You know, nowadays they call themselves babe. Eh? During the time of my mother and my father, they used to call themselves daddy, you know. <laughs> daddy, you know. 
Today is babe. Okay, let me try that. Babe. Eh? Okay. For me, he calls me sweetheart. That's our code. Eh? Now, <laughs> nobody is telling you, babe, you are smart. You are beautiful. I love the way. <laughs> Yesterday in the car, I was with my husband in the car. And I, I touched my stomach. I said, oh, my stomach is big. He touched it. He said, I love this stomach. You know, I felt nice that even if I will go, even if it's going shaking, of course, I don't have that. Eh? I don't mind. He loves it. When I was very fat, my husband never told me even one day, sweetheart, you are fat. Mm -mm. I used to ask him, am I, am I okay? You know, I'm fat. Am I? And he said, I love the way you are. You know, you are beautiful. One day I got a dress. Sorry to tell you this. I'm trying to show you. If your husband will not talk to you, the voice, another voice you will hear. If you don't challenge altars, another voice will, will talk to you. Now, I, I, whoa, one day I took a dress and I said, I will wear this. When I wore it, it fell. I was so annoyed from the bedroom. And that is not me. I called my husband and I said, his name, this time is his name. It's not sweetheart. I called him and I said, come. He thought I'm falling or I'm falling or something. See, why did you tell, why didn't you tell me I was this fat? You know? <laughs> anyway, we started laughing. If you don't challenge altars, they will talk to you. If you don't, if you don't challenge, the Bible says this woman, listen to the voice of Satan. Number two, the husband was not there to tell this woman, stop it. You know, let's go. God said, you know, this woman started opening up because this man, this, this snake is talking to this woman. I don't know whether it came in form of snake. I don't know. I was not there. Now, the Bible says, but the Bible says a serpent, eh? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of this tree of the garden. But of the fruit of the... Look at that. She is exposing everything. And this is what Satan wanted. There are people who will call me. They will ask me things. I will not give them everything. I will say, you go pray about it. There are things I don't tell people. They are, I don't open up to everybody. Why? You may open up to a serpent. Now, the Bible says that, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Look at that. Already, she, he has, she has said everything because the man was not there. The man didn't keep her busy. The man, my friend, the, look at, uh, hey, number four, the Bible says, and the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. You shall not surely die. This death can be physical, can be spiritual. Number five, for God does know that in the day you eat, therefore then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Look at that. He, they are now having a discussion. If you don't challenge altars, voices will start speaking to you. You may not hear that voice, but every time there is a challenge in your family, this is what you say. My father, before he died, this is what happened. I looked at the way my father died. I looked at it and I said, these are altars. Thank God it will never happen because I've dealt with it. I looked at the way his father died. When his father died, he left my father in the house and my mother. He went and slept in his house. They used to stay together because he's old. My family thought of going, you know, staying with him. He's old, eight years, you know. And, and my, father, my grandfather just died. What killed him is what killed my father. My father and him the same. The same. If you don't, that is a voice. You need to deal with it. It is a voice. You look at women. You go to give birth. You go give birth. And then your daughter, when the right time comes, the same, same symptoms is what she is getting. Deal with it. Because if you don't deal with it, it is a voice speaking against your children. How can you go through CS and your children go through CS? How can you go through loss of children and your children go loss of children how can you go through when you are about to break forth something just come to silence your dancing you have bought the dancing shoes you know very well i'm going to dance something just happens to abort your 
celebrations. What does that mean? They are raised a voice. They are raised a voice. They are raised a voice that needs to be challenged in your family altar. Praise the name of the Lord. This woman had the voice of Satan. It is not the woman that was told. It was Abe, Adam. Adam was told very well in chapter 2. Adam was told very well. Adam was told very well. He was told in this tree, you shall not eat this tree in chapter 2. And the, and the Lord formed the man. The Bible says in verses 9, and out of the ground made a head to grow tree. Look, go read all of it. The Lord instructed, verses 16, and the Lord comm God commanded the man. God commanded the man, not the woman. God commanded, let me tell you, as you see me anointed and graced, there are things my husband will tell me. My husband does not talk much. He, if you hear him talk much, he, he loves you. My husband keeps quiet and swallows. Even my older brother is like that. He keeps quiet, listens to you. You can think they are fools. You can think these people are fools, but inside they are very intelligent. They will be my friend. And he will tell me, I will not react. I will wait because he will speak and something will come. Look at that. The Bible says there are things in the family when God speaks to me, I will wait for God to speak to my husband. If he speaks to my husband, I don't need to pray to ask God because he is the man. The Bible says, and the Lord God commanded the man. It was a command saying of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall die. And the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him look at that. He, he, he spoke to the man and, and the woman was not there. So when the man got the woman, the beauty of the woman confused the man, his mind went haywire, you know, and he spoke what God said, what God said. And this is what sold the man. This is what brought down the man. So you really have to, what voice is speaking? I can teach and teach on that very much. A uh, big, big many and many minutes. So listening to any other voice other than the, that of God is beginning of idolatry. Listen to the voice of God. There is that small, still voice that you can hear. If your ears have not been trained to hear God, listen to your prophet. What will have peace? Take it. Praise the name of the Lord. Number four, multiplication of evil altars in any generation causes people to forsake God and reduce their faith in God. Look at Kenya. Very few, let me, and please get me right. Not all Kenyans have faith in God. Some people call us fanatics, you know. Some people call us fanatics. There are people who come to church just to see. One time. There is a man that came to see. He just came. I was preaching. He came like seven, eight years ago. I was preaching. He stood. He stood at the door where normally I pass. This time we were all passing through the same place. It's not like today people have theirs and I have my door. He stood and he was just looking at me. I'm like, why is this not entering? Why is so my protocol went for him? He couldn't move. The angels had arrested him. Why? His motive was bad. I was coming to see this woman, this woman, you know, this young preacher. What is she saying? <laughs> the rest is history. The Lord dealt with him. You have to challenge altars. If you don't challenge them, they will fight you. You have to deal with things that are speaking against you. If you don't, they will fight you. So if you don't deal with lack of faith in the nation of Kenya, lack of faith god will push people to have faith in him god will push people to know i am me there is no other god there is no other god it is only me corona has brought everybody to one level there is no other god but me people in kenya they have faith in their money they have faith in their businesses but they have no faith in the man of god let me tell you i have faith in my father that if my father tells me this and this, 
I take it. I run with it. My members have so much faith in me that when I tell them I see blessings, they believe it. They testify. There are people who believe in their money more than their salvation and their God. There are people who believe in their husbands that they believe in their husband too much that he is everything, that you, you can't do anything without him. That's why God brings challenges in that marriage. Praise the name of the Lord. You can believe in your education. The Bible says that he frustrates the wisdom of the wise. He makes the foolish, the foolish to be wise. He makes the, 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 the intelligence to be fools. That is what he does. The wisdom of God is found in foolishness. The intelligence of God is found in foolishness. Number five, the purpose of evil altars to oppose the altars of God and steal the people of God away from him. Now, evil altars, if you don't deal with them, their purpose is to steal. Their purpose is to intimidate. There are people who are so... There is one, one religion in the nation of Kenya, and I'm praying that God will bring light in that religion. One of uh, a lady I know in one of the deliverance churches in Nakuru, I used to be in Nakuru those days, came out of deliverance church. She is working as a banker. She is working as a tail girl, the tailors where you, you know, she used to dress nice, sharp, good. You know, she, that person brought, brought, Funny doctrine in that, in that land. Hey, hey, the woman accepted that religion. The next day, she is entering in the office in a headscarf. Yeah. A long dress with, with the mafiriri. You know those ma pleats, eh? That they are taken, you take time to iron the pleats, eh? Hey. And a coat, a tailor in the bank. And flat shoes. Yeah. She was given one in the first day. She said, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus yesterday. The other day, the other day she was sacked. She was sacked. Now that she knows the truth, she is jobless. That is a doctrine. That is the purpose to intimidate women. To make women look like small diviners. Even small children. That is the purpose. To intimidate. Any religion that is intimidating you is not from God. For where there is the spirit of God, there is liberty. Praise the name of the Lord. Number six. Unchallenged evil altars cause a lot of problems to mankind and to the children of God in particular. Unchallenged evil altars. If you don't, let me tell you. If I don't, if I did not take a step of faith to deal with the altars in my father's house, we would be many that are dead in that family. In fact, we would have been wiped away, all of us, one by one. If you don't deal with that altar, if you, one time I went to preach in Uganda, I had just started preaching. I just started preaching. I went preached in Uganda. And when I dealt with a power, God told me not to deal with it. But because I was frustrated, I was desperate, I said, let me deal with it. I dealt with it. Coming out from the altar, my nose is blocked. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe well. I started having sinuses, you know. I started having flus, never handkerchiefs after for 18 years. I tried to deal with it. It could not go. I discovered in my family we had the same. Why? I dealt with an altar that I should have dealt with it in a personal level before I deal with it. When I finished and when I realized the problem, I dealt with it. God healed me. I used to have handkerchiefs every day, even in church. Hmm, every time. People used to buy me handkerchiefs. Guy, they, Jesus, they, yeah. There are challenges if you don't deal in your family they will come to destroy you. So number six, unchallenged evil altars causes a lot of problems to mankind and to the children of God in particular. In your society, 
when I went to the village from town, we have gone to the village, we have owned our own land, we have owned our own home, no paying rent, we are happy, entered in, in our house. When we went there, there is no rain. We stayed for many years without rain. And I remember my mother, I wish she knew what I know today because my mother feared God. And every morning my mother would pray with the little knowledge she had, Father, give me rain every day. She used to say, give me rain. She never used to say release rain in this land. No, give me rain that I will not die of hunger. Give me rain that makobe makwa maihore irio. You know, hepura negeda gede. The rain started. The rain started. The day my mother died, those are many years, 201, he died, 203. The day my mother died, the rain out of nowhere in January rained. The day she died, on that day, she died. The rain rained from nowhere. She was, in fact, my father's car could not take her to the mortuary. We had to get my father-in-law's car because it was a big bulldozer car. It took her to mortuary. When she entered into mortuary, the rain stopped. In my village, there was no rain. Until God opened my eyes and I said, oh, the rain went with the one who asked for it. I started dealing with it. So every time in my village, there is rain. Praise the name of the Lord. My mother feared God. Even she had a very beautiful watch. It, didn't, it was a round watch. You just need to pull it. And then it comes out. It didn't have a clock, you know, to clock it out over. No, no, no. But when she was taken to the mortuary, they tried to steal it. It refused to come out. They called for my father. He removed it. That is the power. You can imagine if that woman, if that woman feared, if that woman had the knowledge I have, I would be calling her Prophet Veronica. Prophet Veronica. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are altars you need to challenge. Even in Embu. When I came to Embu, you could cross the road. You don't need to check left, right, left, you know? Right, left, let me remember how I was taught, okay? When you stand on the road, my mother used to tell us, right, left, right, cross. Okay, that's how we used to do it. My girls are laughing. That's what we used to do. It. There was nothing like that. There was nothing. And Pesa had to go from MCO to those side of Jatomi. There were no banks, were very few. But I took a step of faith. I know others did, but I did it. I wrote universities. People were laughing at me. I wrote one, two, three, four. I wrote everything I needed. Something happened. Today, we have jam in Embu. We have hospitals, you know? We have good hospitals. We have good schools. You don't need to go to Nairobi to get something. You can get it here. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you do not challenge an altar, it will come against you. It will cause problems to you and your family. When you come to a location, deal with the altar. Don't say, I'm from Nairobi. You know, when in Nairobi, you know, I've dealt with altars. Now you have come to Embu. You are living in Embu County. You are married in Embu County. Deal with altars that fight strangers. Deal with altars that fight women. Deal with altars that fight the church. Deal with altars that fight the people in Embu because you are in. The altars will control your destiny. You are, the altars will also produce problems. Deal with it. Praise the name of the Lord. The final one on unchallenged altars. It increases the battles of God's children and deny them the peace of God. What? This, I, what I'm saying, I know. That's why I wrote. Let me tell you, sir. I think I should write a book on this. Look at this. If you don't deal with altars, if you don't challenge altars, okay, okay, another one will deal with it. Apostle Damaris will deal with it. Uh, Fulani will deal with it. My friend, it will multiply problems. Apart from multiplying problems, it will multiply, multiply battles. Battles. One battle after another. One battle after another. When God is about to lift you, who are you to be lifted down? 
Hehe. <laughs> battles. It is like you are in the field of battles. It is not that you are not saved. You know, when I came to Embu, I asked myself, is it that I didn't hear God well? Number one. Number two, is it that I am wicked? In fact, I used to pray and ask God a lot of things. I used to tell God, number one, I got married a virgin. Sorry to say it. I'm just telling you what I was telling God. I never knew men. I, I was righteous. Number two, I've never gone to a bar. I don't know how beer tastes. I don't know. I've never... Not pool. Tikogushia, not pool. I wanted to say pool cigar. No, I have never smoked. I, 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 I have never stolen. I've never killed. Why is all this coming around me? You know, there are those things you ask yourself, eh? Hey, I used to ask God. Until God opened my eyes. The altars are challenging you. Challenge the altars. If you don't challenge altars, they will challenge you. Hey, hey, hey. One man in Second Kings, let's go there, tried to challenge the altar of God. The king, Second Kings, chapter 3. I hope it is that one, chapter 3 or chapter 16. God help me. Let me look whether it is that one. The unchallenged. Hey. Yes, Second Kings, chapter 13. In the three and twenty year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Israel, of Israel, Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, uh, Jehu, began to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned 17 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord and followed the sins of Jehoahaz. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of Hazel. Uh -huh. Now, he delivered. There's another one I'm looking for. Let me find whether it is that one. First Kings 13. Let me go to 1 Kings 13 also. This scripture, sometimes you can have so many scriptures in your spirit until chapter 1 Kings chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Yes, 1 Kings chapter 13. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the, uh, in the word of the Lord and said, Oh, altar, altar. He was challenging that altar. The man of God was assigned to challenge the altar of sin, to challenge the altar and the sub servicer, the one that was servicing the altar. Oh, altar, thus says the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born to the house of David, Joshua, or Jesua by name, and upon David, and you shall be offered, and he shall offer the priest of the aha, uh -huh, the priest, he shall offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon you, and men's bones shall be born upon you. And he gave a sign in the day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. He was challenging the altar. And it came to pass when King Joabu had had uh, the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it again. Listen here. The man of God challenged the altar that was, that was being lifted in sin. The man of God challenged the altar and the person that was servicing. And he said that this altar shall be torn into two pieces. And the Bible says the man that was servicing the altar challenged the man of God that was assigned to challenge the altar. And the hand of the king withered. Praise the name of the Lord. My media has stood. Withered. Praise the name of the Lord. If you do not challenge the altar, the altar will challenge you. If you do not challenge your battle, the battles will kill you. Many people have just died. Many people have just died. They are just dead. Why? Because they have not challenged altars. My daughter is coming closer, closer. Thank you. Because you have not challenged the altars. So you need to challenge the altars for you to progress. If I did not deal with altars in Embu County, they had challenged me a lot. These altars had challenged me. I did not know how to, there is nothing I've not gone through in this land. I did not know how, peace in the night, I did not know. Because they are challenging me. They are challenging me. I am an altar. 
assigned to a challenge the altars in this county. They will challenge me. The powers of the land challenged me. When you are dealing with the powers of the land, you are dealing with the old people that we are here years before, even those that are 80 years are here. The ancestors of the land, you are dealing with them. When you are dealing with the powers of the land, they will make even the church of Christ to fight you. It is not the church of Christ. It is the powers of the land. You will not be at peace. Your body will not be at peace. You will not be healthy. You will suffer sicknesses. Why? Because of the unchallenged altars. When you challenge altars, my friends, you will be the happiest person in that location. Anywhere you go, challenge the altars. But you only challenge them if you are under a strong covering. You may say, Apostle Damaris, I am an Anglican. I am a Presbyterian. I am a Roman Catholic. I am a Roman Catholic person. How can I challenge? I don't know. Follow me. Hear what I'm telling you. Learn from me. Hide yourself in this covering. Fight the battles for yourself. The Bible says in Nahum, let me deal with the last, with the last scripture. I'm not preaching on that. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 14. And I looked and I rose up and said to the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not you afraid of them. Remember the Lord which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. It takes one person to fight. It takes the faith of only one person. When in that family, that one brother, that one sister, support them. Let them fight your battles. Obey them. I am the last born in my father's house. But they obey me. They listen to me. They follow me. Why? I am the set man in that family to deliver them and to bring their celebrations. In the ministry of chariots of fire, I am the president of that ministry. I am the set man. I am the one that services the altar. When I talk to my members, they should hear me. They should obey me. They should follow me so that we may be able to do what God has called me into their own lives and even in the land of, of, of Embu County. Now, in the nation of Kenya, we are so many that God has lifted. But I know, and I'm not ashamed to say, I am the set woman in the area of intercession to deal with the revival and to pray for the nation of Kenya. So I know myself. I am an altar. I know there are others, but I know what God has spoken to me. I am an altar. Never challenge an altar. An altar will smash you if you are not under a strong covering. May the God of this commission watch, watch over you. May the grace that is upon my life become your portion, fight your battles, stand with you, push you to success, even as you fulfill a, the word of God in, in Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 14. When you stand and fight for your family, for your brethren, for your sons, for your daughters, for your wives, and for your houses. May the great God shower you with the blessings to understand the second phase of altars. We are now in the second phase of dealing with evil altars. May God grace you. May God watch over you. May your eyes open and never be dim so that you can be able to challenge the altars. God bless you. You are there. You want to receive Jesus. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I want to accept you as Lord and personal Savior. And I want you to write my name in the book of life and remove my name in the book of death and hell. May God keep you that have accepted the Lord. May God mark you and may God preserve you. God bless you. Pray for me. Continue supporting me in your prayers, in your finances, and the Lord God will bless you. Number two, subscribe to my YouTube, Apostle Damaris Mumbi. Share my messages, comments, pray for me, and join the School of Mentorship with Apostle Damaris, Facebook, and I will, I will accept you. Just join and God will bless you. God bless you so much. You want to know more about me? Connect to Chariots of Fire International Ministries uh, on Facebook and become a friend and God will help you. God bless you so much.